Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador and I'd like to talk to you about setting up your Sony Alpha camera to shoot rapidly moving subjects, which is ideal for action and sports photography. Now, photographers have been obsessed with capturing fast moving stuff since the beginning of photography itself. If we have a look at these early images captured by Edward Mybridge to discover how a horse looks during any stage of the gallop sequence. So we're going to be setting up our Sony Alpha cameras, specifically the late model Sony Alpha cameras released during 2019 or later. Basically the ones that have AF tracking and not the older lock-on AF. Now we're looking at cameras such as the Alpha 6400, 6600, the Alpha 7R Mark IV, uh, the A7C and the A9 cameras. So if you're looking for an earlier model, just check out my YouTube channel because I do have movies that talk about setting up your earlier Sony Alpha camera for shooting this genre. Now don't worry if you have struggled with this in the past. Even some professional camera reviewers sometimes get it spectacularly wrong, basically choosing the incorrect settings. When we saw the launch of the Alpha 6400 camera, one of the camera reviewers couldn't even get the camera out of AFA, which is basically the first step moving into continuous autofocus. Uh, needless to say, once we do get the right settings, the cameras are incredibly good at tracking fast action. And the camera here is doing all of the work. All I've ensured is that I've got an appropriate aperture, shutter speed and drive mode. And we're gonna be looking at a few other the settings as well. Now if you're going to bail out of this movie quite quickly uh, take a look at these important uh, settings first. We are going to be setting the drive mode to continuous. High is my preferred choice not high plus. We're going to be using focus mode also continuous so, so that's the word continuous used twice there and it's continuous auto focus. Now by default the cameras are set up for AFA and that tends to be a little bit unreliable when shooting fast action sports. The focus area, we're going to move to one of the AF tracking, something that uh, Sony referred to as real time uh, focus tracking, formerly known as lock on AF. Shooting mode, now this is where I differ from a lot of sports photographers. I will be using aperture priority for a couple of very good reasons, but this only works um, on these alpha cameras if we also combine that with ISO auto and ISO auto minimum shutter speed because we do need to control the shutter speed when shooting action sports. And we, if we have um, a steady shot on a lens, we're going to be switching that to mode 2, which basically disables the horizontal panning uh, stabilization, which does allow us to smooth, smoothly pan with our fast moving subjects. Now, if you don't have a steady shot setting on the lens, we are going to be switching that off on the camera and more about that later. Now, it's very important that also if you do have silent shooting and you like silent shooting, we do need to switch that off when shooting fast moving subjects. Otherwise, we are going to get uh, a distortion, a shutter distortion effect on our fast moving subjects. There is a couple of cameras that are an exception to the rule and we'll talk about that again later. Now, if you are working with one of the A6000 series cameras and you prefer to use auto, just uh, go from auto into scene mode and pick up the, uh, the action icon there, the picture of the, the icon of the running uh, sports person. Now, um, there, it is slightly limiting these action scene modes. They haven't been updated um, for some of the latest camera settings you have on your camera and they will limit what you can do. Yes they increase the shutter speed to that one two thousandth of a second but they do limit um, exposure compensation and uh, also your choice of focus area so that is a little bit limiting but it's better than full auto mode. Now 
a revolution happened with the Sony Alpha cameras in 2019 and the first camera to see these benefits of these new tracking algorithms was the Alpha 6400 camera and uh, basically uh, what has happened is they use now using very fast Beyond X process to, to deal with these additional algorithms so the improved focus tracking couldn't be rolled back to all cameras in Sony's lineup but we are now seeing that improved focus tracking on all new Sony cameras. We have the IAF but what happens is when that eye is uh, obscured by something that comes um, in front of your subject then it's going to revert either to face detect or start tracking using its distance information start tracking the uh, subject or the part of the subject that was nearest to that eye when the eye was lost from view. So as this hip hop dancer raises his arm, instead of pulling focus on the arm itself, it stays with the face. Um, and you can see the focus tracking icon now tracking uh, this guy's beard here. So at a parade that I was uh, working at, you can see on the top left hand corner, the IAF is working really well and it's ignoring the outstretched arm that's uh, closer to the camera. So all is good. But in that uh, center top image there, you can see what is happening is um, a photo another photographer is just starting to move in front of the camera. And by the time we get to the top right hand image, now the subject that I was photographing is almost totally obscured from view. Now most cameras will pull focus on the nearest subject to the camera, but because we are tracking, it's holding on to that subject for dear life. You can see it's just got a little bit of the ear and the hat, but it's faithfully holding on to that subject. So when that um, uh, passerby leaves the, uh, the, the view, uh, we're still tracking that subject. It didn't miss a beat. All of those shots are staying with the subject. And so that is the beauty of these cameras released from the Alpha 6400 and later. Now there was an older algorithm for tracking on the previous uh, camera models called Lock on AF. It would occasionally jump ship and you'd find that instead of tracking your subject, in this case the dog, it would start tracking some nearby subject matter, in this case the grass itself. So uh, I typically would advise people not always to dive in straight to Lock on AF, just to use the wide focus area and then move to Lock on AF if there were a likely to be obstacles passing in front of your primary target. Now what we have with the very latest model cameras is yes we had Animal IF but it was inconsistent uh, or couldn't be used with AF tracking on cameras such as the Alpha 7 R4. Now when we've seen uh, uh, the newer releases such as the Alpha 9 II also backdated to the Alpha 9 and we have the Alpha 7C we see that we can have Animal IF combined with AF tracking and this just helps the camera more reliably stay with a fast moving subject. So the AF tracking continues to get better and better with uh, recent model alpha cameras. So because I switch between uh, humans moving quickly and animals moving quickly, I've assigned subject detection uh, to the function menu. So I can quickly move between humans and animals. I'm hoping one day it will auto switch between the two, but at the moment we're manually switching between humans and animals. But when um, the Animal IF works well with the uh, AF tracking, you can see every little bit of help is going to uh, be welcome when we're tra tracking such rapidly moving subjects such as these dogs here. Now, uh, typically uh, what I find is a lot of people coming over from Canons do favor a small cluster of focus points uh, such as the expand flexible spot. Now, this isn't always the quickest way to lock on to a subject because we first have to move a, sub, uh, a spot focus point onto a target. This was a typically a Canon way of getting uh, an accurate focus on your moving subject. Now this isn't always required for Sony Alpha cameras. The wide is incredibly reliable and wide is very wide on these Sony cameras.
So as you can see in this particular subject, the tracking is faultless here and the eyes are in perfect focus. They're sharper than the actual hands which are on the handlebars which are closer to the camera. And that is because the beauty of face detect and eye detect is moving that focus point and prioritizing the face on this particular action shot. Now, if we are using a spot AF, we do have to move the spot onto the face to ensure that is working. But with wide, it will automatically pick up the face wherever it is in the frame. So wide is good for 90% of subjects or even more because for most photographers the subject that you're photographing is close to the camera and it is close to the center of the frame and those are the algorithms that wide is using and if you look through your own folio I guarantee that 90% of the time that is where you want your focus to be. Now, uh, I was tracking the cyclist with the white helmet when he was front and center in the frame. But because I have wide AF tracking enabled, even when he is no longer front and center, he's now behind another rider who is overtaking him, uh, that the focus stays with my initial subject. It's going to ignore uh, the guy with the blue top. It knows what it's tracking and it's staying with that subject. Um, so wide is, is uh, also good in these types of scenes. Now occasionally as that uh, board surfer or kite board surfer gets lower towards the waves, what could happen with the old lock on AF is it will jump to the water which is closer or, or the splashes of water that are closer to the camera. But as soon as we started tracking um, the guy, uh, obviously the face detect, the eye detect and the colors that the guy is working is going to ensure focus stays with this subject. Only if this um, uh, uh, board surfer was much smaller in the frame would I consider reducing the size of the focus area. Now, if you are using wide and you quickly need to um, pull a, um, a focus point and expand flexible spot with tracking, you don't have to change necessarily the focus area. If you have uh, touch focus enabled, all you need to do on the monitor is touch your subject and it will move from that wide focus area to your subject itself. You don't have to go into the menus to do that. It can be set up through the function of touch operation. Now, unfortunately, Sony has positioned this a long way from the touch operation itself, which is either on or off. So what I would recommend that you do if you want to change the function of touch operation to things like touch shutter or touch focus instead of touch tracking, then what I would encourage you to do is put those two menu items into the my menu side by side so that you can both enable touch operation and choose your function of touch operation setting. Now, uh, another thing, if you're not using the monitor, but you're using the electronic viewfinder, again, on the very latest cameras, such as the Alpha 9 and the Alpha 7C cameras, is um, we can actually still use uh, touch uh, focus. Uh, without using a multi-selector or joystick, we simply need to touch the monitor uh, with our thumb, a drag a crosshair to our subject, let go of the monitor, and then touch operation kicks in on a specific subject. So this overrides wide again. So wide is a really a good place to start and we can quickly override wide if and when we need to for those times where the subject might be right on the edge of the frame or slightly behind another subject. So this is incredibly useful uh, on a camera such as the Alpha 7C which doesn't have a multi-selector to move the focus point. We simply can have the touch operation uh, on, we can have the function of touch operation set to touch tracking and then we just move our thumb, target our primary subject let go and the camera takes over from there and what you'll see is the familiar um, touch tracking icon kick in which is that little green square with a line to the left and to the right. Now some photographers will tell you that if you're shooting sports, action, wildlife you really need to be using bat back button AF. 
On the modern Sony cameras, there's no advantage to using back button AF. Uh, trust me on this one. And you will actually um, um, uh, disable the ability to use that touch tracking that I showed you earlier. Now, if you've been a long time user of back button autofocus, I'm not going to try and persuade you to switch uh, after all of this time. But just check out my back button autofocus video tutorial on YouTube to see um, any sort of positives or negatives from using this workflow instead of the default workflow that Sony have given you. If you're also new to using touch operation to control focus, just also check out my touch operation video tutorial on YouTube where I'll go into more depth and detail than I am in this particular video tutorial. If you are going to bail out from this movie um, soon, I would encourage you to watch to the end so you can master, become a true master of your Sony Alpha camera. Then just take a look at some of these settings. Shoot mode, aperture priority, aperture, keep it wide, ISO auto, ISO auto minimum shutter speed. I would start with a very high one and then adjust from there, such as one two thousandth of a second continuous high not high plus especially if you're about to pan the camera continuous AF that's AFC tracking try wide if uh, wide you feel is just a little bit too broad then go for zone priority set in AFC set to release if you want every frame and the maximum number of frames per second and make sure you have subject detection uh, set to human or animal depending on what it is you're photographing and what I would encourage you to do, because that's quite a number of settings, is don't try and remember all of those settings every time you want to shoot action. Just register them to one of the memories on the shoot mode dial. So you could be shooting portraits, you could be shooting landscapes, something starts moving rapidly and unexpectedly. You just move the shoot mode dial. I have it set to number two on the shoot mode dial of all of my cameras. In fact, if you're looking um, to see how I use those one, two and three memory settings, uh, I have them set up to an acronym I call my PAL, portrait on one, action on number two, handheld landscape on number three. And I have a movie that discusses that workflow in much more depth. These are starting settings. I don't always restrict myself to using those precise settings, but it's, it makes sure that I never miss a shot because I know those settings work. I can fine tune those settings, but they'll always revert to those default memories when I move away from the shoot mode dial on one, two or three, and then back again. It will always restore those starting settings, which I know will always get me the shot. OK, a couple of the uh, unusual settings uh, we've discussed already, but I'll go into more depth now. If you're going to watch through to the end of the tutorial, is that one two thousandth per second. Why use such uh, fast shutter speeds? Why not slow them down sometimes? And I do slow the shutter speed down occasionally. And uh, why are we using that wide um, focus area? Surely we should be using a spot more often um, than perhaps I, I will be uh, telling you to use. Okay, so first of all, uh, that Spot AF. Now, Sony have given you an exceptionally broad coverage of those focus areas. If you compare this to an old style DSLR, you'll see uh, this coverage of AF points is is lending itself to using the wide focus area because we have such a width and so many focus points. Basically, we're covering 93% or more of the sensor now with those phase detect auto focus points. And uh, trust me on this one, I shoot a lot of rapidly moving subjects. You know, I've got thousands and thousands of pin sharp dogs. And if you look at these uh, little um, uh, collection of photographs here, you'll see the subject is pretty much nearly always uh, front and center. So wide is going to do a great job. Occasionally we'll get uh, long grass or water in front of the dog and occasionally I might decide to reduce the size of the focus area, but most of the time wide will get me the shot. 
Now, um, looking at that um, uh, uh, starting point of one two thousandth of a second. Now, one two thousandth of a second is is uh, pretty much uh, going to freeze that action, and uh, you don't need any skills at panning the camera accurately and smoothly. The the shutter speed will freeze the subject for you. So, like this uh, running dog on the left. Even if I'm not panning 100% accurately, I will still get the job uh, done. If you look at the image on the right where we've got this movement blur behind uh, this uh, scooter in Vietnam, you'll see it does give the impression or illusion of a racing um, um, a motor uh, bike. But uh, it does require a little bit of skill at panning smoothly with the subject matter as well as the correct camera settings. Now, when I've got you to set up your camera for the correct action settings, we can still override those to choose um, a slower shutter speed by adjusting the ISO auto minimum shutter speed. So um, at a sports event such as uh, the Australian uh, Motorcycle Grand Prix, you see I'm uh, photographing the world champion Mark Marquez here exiting um, the hairpin bin. Now essentially the motorcycle is coming towards me so the camera is not panning very quickly or not at all. The camera uh, autofocus and all of the settings I've set up are doing all of the work. So I, effectively I could give this camera to an inexperienced photographer and uh, as long as the settings are set up uh, anybody is going to get this shot if they can get the motorcycle in the middle of the frame. As I said the camera is doing all of the work. If I move uh, vantage point and uh, choose an exit to the corner where I need to pan the camera extremely rapidly, now my skill is coming to the forefront because if I don't pan the camera really accurately, I'm going to get none of the images pin sharp. I've slowed the, um, the shutter speed down now to 1 320th of a second. I actually choose the ISO auto minimum shutter speed of 250th, but the camera has just gone slightly faster to because it's prioritizing um, the exposure. Now if I'd, if it, the camera had stuck to 1 250th um, the white detail on the leathers and the petrol tank would have been overexposed and so this is one of the advantages of using uh, ISO auto and ISO auto minimum shutter speed with aperture priority. This workflow always protects exposure so I will never clip those highlights when I'm trying to close the aperture down to slow the shutter speed down to uh, get that movement blur behind my subject. Now one of the things you need to be aware of on the Sony Alpha cameras and it's again it's one of the reasons I use ISO auto minimum shutter speed with aperture priority because on most of the Sony cameras I will not stop down more than f11. If I do stop down more than f11 on um, Sony Alpha cameras the phase detect autofocus will get locked on the first frame and all subsequent frames in medium or high or high plus will be locked onto the initial frame focus point. So all of the subsequent shots will most likely be out of focus. Now if you're using an Alpha 9 camera you can close the aperture down as far as f16 but for all other Alpha cameras with the AF tracking it is the f11. Older model uh, Alpha A7R2 and A7R3 cameras, you can't close down more than F8. I've taken this um, this note out of the online um, manual, uh, but a lot of people have missed this point. And so, if you are using um, shutter priority and you are trying to create that movement blur behind your subject, that nothing will stop that camera from closing the aperture down below f11 or below f16 to get that slow shutter speed and you will lose focus with that workflow. One of the things that is problematic when choosing such slow shutter speeds for that movement blur is um, in full sun you will overexpose the image or you uh, the camera won't slow down sufficiently if you're using ISO auto minimum shutter speed. You may have set it um, to 1 30th but the camera to protect exposure perhaps won't slow down below 1 320th of a second. So you may need to use an ND8 
filter on front of the lens so which will allow you to slow the shutter speed down below that 1 to 50th as you can see here now uh, the reason I'm slowing down more here 1 1 30th instead of 1 3 120th which I did with that Grand Prix motorcycle is as the speed of the panning of the camera it's not actually relative to the speed of the moving subject it's how fast you're panning the camera uh, the faster you're panning the camera uh, the more blur and obviously if I'm uh, panning the camera with a Grand Prix Mo cycle um, the speed of the pan is going to be much faster than when I'm panning with this slow moving scooter and as you can see if you are going to learn a panning skill then um, try on subjects that you can repeat over and over again it may take several thousand shots before you get your eye in it's a bit like practicing a golf swing it won't come intuitively to you and the idea is when you press the shutter release you carry on panning smoothly always trying to keep the uh, the subject in the center of the frame uh, if you're panning too quickly or panning too slowly the amount of images that are completely out of focus will increase rapidly so let's start looking at some of these in depth okay I would still encourage you to stay with this video tutorial because there are some subtleties in these camera settings which will make you a better photography uh, you will have uh, mastery over the craft of shooting sports action so we're going to be looking six of the best shoot mode shut, shutter speed drive mode focus mode focus area and the steady shot settings now success relies not just on a couple we need to get them all in place to uh, raise uh, the ability of the camera to reward us with many more pin sharp images now many of these settings can be accessed via the hardware controls on the camera first off number one if you're going to follow my recommendations aperture priority on the shoot mode dial on the top of the camera now for most cameras except the Alpha 9 cameras if we press the left side of the control wheel we'll get to drive mode and we can set that to high not high plus remember especially if we're going to be panning the camera three on nearly all of the alpha cameras um, is the uh, right side of that control wheel which is your ISO and you'll select that to auto now for those people with the alpha 9 cameras the the drive mode will be on the on the hard control wheel on the top of the camera now there isn't a high plus on the alpha 9 camera for very good reason which I'll go into shortly um, and we, we also have the focus mode which I'll be talking about there also on um, that uh, hardware control on the top left hand side of that camera now if you do have a C2 key on the top of your alpha camera this by default will be be set to uh, focus area and I would leave it there it's one of the things that we do need to get quick access to now predominantly I am shooting wide occasionally overriding with touch focus touch operation but uh, if you do need to move to a, a spot quickly and leave it there then um, C2 key is the fastest way of getting there and because it's assigned to a custom key on the top of the camera and you can see the focus areas in the viewfinder there is no reason to take the camera away from your eye to change that setting if and when required now okay let's go back to uh, the ISO auto now remember this has to be used uh, in conjunction with ISO auto minimum shutter speed now Sony um, have buried this feature it's an incredibly useful feature but it is buried in uh, the uh, ISO setting in the menus what I would encourage you once you've gone in there for the first time and maybe set it to ISO auto one two thousandth of a second if you do need to modify that quickly I would consider assigning it to the function menu now I've actually assigned it to the C1 key on um, all of my um, uh, 
alpha cameras except the alpha 7c so uh, because uh, i do like to have control over that iso auto minimum shut speed without taking the camera from my eye next best thing just put it in the function menu so you can get quick access to it so let's take a look at some of the uh, the menu items to finish off some of these settings so there we are getting um, uh, um, all of the uh, features that I need to adjust which are access via menu so rather than deep diving into the menus to get these I will put all of these in my function menu and this includes number three ISO auto minimum shutter speed which I've now set up to one two thousandth of a second uh, the focus mode is set to continuous auto focus um, we can choose the focus area I would start with wide and tracking AF tracking wide you'll see that there's two wides there's the general wide without the tracking and there's wide with tracking so you want the second one and uh, steady shot now steady shot if you're using one of the sporting lenses you'll see you'll see that your steady shot settings are controlled on the lens itself but if you're using a lens without steady shot switch you're going to be um, accessing that on the camera itself and if you are panning that camera quickly you'll probably want to disable steady shot once you've gone to that function menu and you've selected uh, ISO auto or your focus mode you're going to be using the front di front dial on your camera to change the setting if uh, you're using an alpha 7c without that front dial you'll use the control wheel on the back of the camera camera to adjust that setting now when we're working with the um, the focus area now the um, all of the AF tracking uh, we're basically moving um, um, horizontally through that sub menu of tracking rather than vertically through those menus and this is where we start using the rear dial on all alpha cameras to move from a maybe AF tracking wide to AF tracking zone to AF tracking flexible spot and so we are going to be leaning on that rear dial if we need to change that uh, focus setting so aperture priority as I said 90% or more will be shot in aperture priority for me now one of the reasons I will move out of aperture priority is um, a scenario such as this where um, the subject is staying in the same level of illumination but the background brightness tone is changing rapidly so if I give you this example of a bird in flight that's moving from um, a backlit sky to dark foliage this would require using quick exposure compensation for you know while the bird is over the sky I would be increasing uh, the exposure compensation when it's over dark foliage I would be decreasing exposure compensation this is very difficult to do when you're panning and trying to keep the bird in the center of the frame so in these instances where you do have this particular scenario where the background brightness is always changing but the subject is always in the same level of illumination this is where I come out into manual exposure and my starting point for this on a sunny day would be one two thousandth of a second f5.6 ISO 320 so that's a manual ISO a manual um, aperture and a manual shutter speed now occasionally it won't always be sunlit so I'll need to modify those manual settings as the lighting conditions change but on a sunlit day even with a very dark background or a bright backlit sky the subject will be perfectly exposed even if there's white plumage in the bird feathers in this instance if I'm having to adjust exposure because the ambient lighting conditions change I will actually use the uh, the zebra or zebra feature um, to alert me as to when the brightest highlights are becoming overexposed and then I'll adjust the ISO accordingly until the zebras disappear now I have my uh, zebras set to 109 plus lower limit 
um, because as a raw shooter I don't need them kicking in early such as if I've set the zebras to 100. Now again I will go into that information about how I've set up zebras on my camera in my video tutorial called Zebra 109 Plus for raw shooters. Uh, the, raw, uh, the Zebra feature really was initially set up for videographers to be guaranteed that their highlights are being correctly exposed. I actually use it as an overexposure warning when I'm using manual exposure. Okay, number two, shutter speed. Um, now, some people uh, will uh, artificially um, lower the uh, the uh, the upper limit of ISO so auto because they don't like uh, noisy images so they might say oh I don't like using 12,800 or 6,400 because it results in noisy images so I'm going to lower that to something I'm more comfortable with like 3,200 ISO there actually is no point in doing this uh, because if you lower the upper limit you will simply and not get a, an image with lower noise you'll either um, get a blurry image because the subject blur because the shutter speed didn't go fast enough or you'll get an underexposed image so for an image like this where it's the first light of day I'm shooting with the aperture wide open and uh, the shutter speed is just fast enough to freeze the action so the ISO is the only third component that will ensure that I get the correct shutter speed and exposure so in this sense it's had to ri rise to 12,800 and yes it is a little bit noisy but it's a great shot all of the same and if I'd have artificially lowered the upper ISO auto limit to 3200 the simple fact is, is I would not have this shot and I'd much prefer to have the shot with a little bit of noise than not have the shot at all. ISO auto minimum shutter speed, as I've said, um, start with one two thousandth of a second, assign it to a custom key or the function menu. So if you need to um, move it lower because your subject isn't moving as quickly, you do have that option. Now again just to reinforce why I'm using aperture priority it's um, because I am protecting exposure. If you set this up in your studio late at night and you raise the camera you'll probably see that um, your shutter speed is nowhere near one two thousand of a second because the level of illumination is so dim the camera has had to drop to maybe one fiftieth of a second to ensure you've got an appropriate exposure. It will of course rise to that one two thousandth of a second as soon as you go out during the day in daylight you will then get that minimum shutter speed. Remember your camera with this workflow is always protecting your exposure first. If you need to know more information about ISO auto minimum shutter speed Again, just check out my video tutorial on my Alpha YouTube channel and I'll go into that in a little bit more depth. Okay, one two thousandth of a second is my recommended starting point because it will freeze. The camera is doing all of the work. Uh, if you can choose your location, get the action coming towards you, you won't have to use your panning skills at all. And um, such as this, the world champion Mark Marquez is probably banked over in excess of 100 miles an hour here, and yet the camera is doing all of the work. Um, uh, such uh, uh, fabulous technology that we can get this even on an Alpha 7C we can get these hero sports shots the cameras are that good uh, this is on an Alpha 6400 camera I went and shot a parade and I shot thousands of images of portraits with people running and dancing and uh, all of the shots were absolutely pin sharp it, I was really impressed with the the new real-time AF tracking and the camera is faithfully uh, getting the focus always in the right place even when I'm using the maximum f1.8 aperture uh, on this um, 85mm lens on an uh, Alpha 6400 camera. 
those uh, one two thousands per second yes you might not get the movement blur behind your subject but we are going to get the hero splash of water we're going to be able to see the fine detail we're, we're going to be able to see uh, the scared expression on this guy's face as he's lost his board um, and he's, he's going to attempt to um, surf on the uh, surface of the water unsuccessfully I might add so you can see that one two thousand per second is going to give us some really great great hero images and if you do have time to practice yes um, you will start to build up what I would recommend is not start off at one thirtieth of a second maybe start off at uh, one two fiftieth and then try and work slower as your panning skills improve and if you're blasting off at maybe eight frames per second in high mode you might find that three quarters of the images are not sharp at all but you will get maybe one hero image from a sequence just remember slower to blur and if your camera only goes down to f11 and you want to go even slower just invest in a neutral density 8 filter that's three stops so we'll be able to go much uh, slower on the shutter speed just with that nd8 filter and then when you're finding you're panning your camera you're going to be able to uh, look at fine detail once you once you're panning accurately you'll be able to look at the door handle on the on the car of this speeding Porsche and go yes I think I've nailed this um, panning uh, game now when we go into that drive mode just remember there is something faster than high if the camera manufacturer Sony has rec said that your camera can achieve 10 frames per second um, it will be a little bit slower maybe 8 frames per second um, but you will get a live view as you're panning your camera I just this is this slide is really just a reminder that when we're setting the um, the settings up that word continuous will appear twice for both drive mode and focus mode this does catch people out because the same word is used for two different camera settings and as you can see uh, in this particular panning sequence I probably took 20 or 30 images of this uh, racing uh, cycle coming past me and they were all sharp now occasionally the IAF may bow out but it will go to the next nearest thing which is probably the graphics on the on the helmet of this cyclist as she's passing me now I did say there was one exception that uh, with the high plus rule and that is the Alpha 9 camera it doesn't have a high plus setting it just has high and this particular camera is 20 frames per second now the Alpha 9 is quite a special camera it's the only Alpha camera that can shoot fast action sports using a fully electronic shutter that's an E front curtain shutter and an E rear curtain shutter it's full electronic the mechanical shutter doesn't play a hand in uh, shooting these images at um, when we were at shooting 20 frames per second with fast shutter speeds now this uh, Alpha 9 camera has a special sensor that enables this to be possible other Alpha cameras um, using more conventional sensors don't do this so what I'm showing you in this illustration is this is a conventional camera using silent shooting mode which is a fully electronic shutter and we can see that golf club is not actually bent but this is shutter distortion what happens is um, the information is pulled off the sensor from top to bottom over an extended period of time and it's basically not fast enough to prevent really rapidly moving subject from distorting during that exposure now with the stack sensor the alpha 9 uses that um, scanning process of the sensor is happening 10 times faster so this uh, avoids that rolling shutter or shutter distortion effect so this camera can shoot uh, the alpha 9 camera can shoot with the fully electronic shutter completely silently as well and so this has made it a real draw card for many sports photographers such as golf matches who can't be uh, heard to be making a noise with their camera shooting at such high frame rates right next to a professional golfer 
So this is the distortion comparison in close-up and it is the sensor that is the difference here. And uh, the stack sensor only appears in two interchangeable lens cameras at the moment, the Alpha 9 and the Alpha 9 II. Okay, so silent shooting for all of the cameras must be switched off, otherwise you will get shutter distortion with really rapidly moving subject matter. The other thing that will slow the drive mode down from maybe 8 frames per second or 20 frames per second if you're using an Alpha 9 is if you're shooting in a RAW format that is uncompressed. Now you will uh, increase the drive mode more frames per second if you're shooting in the compressed RAW file format. Personally I think you really only need to shoot uncompressed with high contrast landscapes where uh, the post-production editing is going to be really quite aggressive. For portraiture and uh, fast action uh, sports really compressed RAW is more than adequate and you will get that higher frame rate when shooting. Another thing that will slow the camera down and it, one of the default setting in priority settings in uh, AFC is for balanced emphasis. Now you can actually move it to something called AF so we'll prioritize focus which might sound good but what will happen is occasionally in a sequence it will start dropping shots if the camera isn't absolutely convinced that it's got a pin sharp image and so basically you'll get fewer frames per second with AF or balanced emphasis. If you want every frame in the sequence and you will basically pick out the occasional out of focus one in post-production then you will set it to release and often or not especially on an Alpha 9 camera they're all sharp anyway. I think again it's much better to have the decisive moment that's only 95% sharp than not have the camera not have the image on the card at all okay so you will get um, the specified frame rates if you shooting um, compressed and you're shooting with the release priority very important in order to get those high frame rates that are stated uh, in the Sony marketing materials Another thing that will slow a camera down eventually, all cameras will slow down eventually from shooting 8 or 20 frames per second is the buffer capacity. How, may, how many images can the camera hold um, while it's writing them to the card and basically the camera is able to collect more images uh, faster than it can actually write them to the memory card and so when that buffer is full and it's busy writing to the card, the camera will slow down significantly. Now on the uh, APS-C, the 6400 and the 6600 camera, your, um, the buffers are quite small. A little bit um, bigger with the full frame cameras such as the A7C, we're going to go over 100 raw images on the Alpha 7C and they get really quite large on the Alpha 9 cameras. Obviously for sports shooter they need to shoot much longer sequences of images before the camera slows down. Now there is a high plus setting to get the 10 frames per second on cameras such as the Alpha 7C or the Alpha 7R4 cameras and, I, and it is possible to use that if the camera basically is not panning, if the subject matter is coming towards you and you're not having to follow a subject with, by panning the camera then by all means use that high plus setting because um, uh, you will get the maximum frame rate um, with those cameras. Um, again subject coming towards you is ideal for that high plus. As soon as you start to have to move the camera you really need to drop down to the high setting. One of the um, um, good features on the Sony Alpha cameras to monitor how much uh, capacity is left in the buffer is this continuous shooting length display. Now if you enable this while you're shooting in continuous drive mode it will appear as a vertical white bar and the height of this bar will start getting smaller and smaller and smaller as the buffer starts reducing. So it's basically an early warning system that you're running out of buffer so if you're wanting to shoot the next player or the next horse coming around the bend then maybe back off 
preserve some of the buffer for the next sequence of images. So this could be a reliable um, aid to shooting continuous drive sequences. Another thing that uh, could slow the camera down is you have not enabled the auto switch media. So when I'm shooting at a high frame rate and I'm shooting a long sequence, if the card fills up and I haven't enabled auto switch media, it won't start recording on the second card. Obviously, um, if you've got two cards in the camera and you're uh, recording a backup to the second card, um, this isn't going to be an option for you. If you're working with the original Alpha 9 camera, um, if you're uh, shooting a backup to the second card, the second card slot, slot 2, is a slower card slot, so you will slow your camera up by having a backup uh, option on the Alpha 9. The Alpha 9 2 has two fast card slots, so this won't slow the, uh, the camera down on the Alpha 9 2. So I have a video tutorial, an extended video tutorial on the drive mode settings where I go into more depth. So be sure to check that one out as well. OK, number four, focus mode. As we discussed earlier, AFC, the default will be AFA as you take the camera out of the box. And as we saw with one of those camera reviewers getting it spectacularly wrong, he forgot to take the camera out of the AFA. And even some of his fellow camera reviewers pointed this out. He was told the camera had incredible AF and he went basically live saying it didn't and basically it was uh, um, the egg was on his face because he just forgot to set the camera up correctly so AFC for continuous for most users now the cameras will spend 95% or more of their time in continuous autofocus it is such a good focus mode so we'll move quickly on to focus area. Now wide is the default. If you've not got it set up to your um, C2 key on the top of the camera, then I would recommend making sure that it is in the function menu. Trying to avoid you having to deep dive into the menus. I don't go into the menus other than to format the card. So um, generally, if you can put the really important stuff in the function menu, you will avoid going into the menus as well. So start with tracking wide. Give it a really good go. Remember, you can override it quickly. And I'll talk about why and some of the instances I override the wide focus area. If you go and you go looking for the tracking, which is the grayed out icon on the bottom of the camera, this is a reminder that you're in AFS and not AF. C continuous so that will be grayed out if you're not in continuous auto focus uh, if you've um, are working this with the camera at your eye um, you will find that if you highlight one of the icons with um, cameras such as the alpha 7 r4 or the alpha 9 you'll be able to swing that and adjust the uh, the, the focus areas using uh, the rear dial remember the um, the sub menu options are always controlled by uh, the rear dial vertical menu options or main options are controlled by the front dial uh, or control wheel. Okay, so um, there we go. We're changing um, uh, uh, focus options using front dial and rear dial and uh, you can do that using the C2 key which is the default setting for most alpha cameras. Now if you're using one of the new Alpha 7C cameras which doesn't have a C1 or C2 on the top uh, by the shutter release, just remember that movie button can be assigned to a custom key when shooting stills. So we can assign this to C1 or C2 on the top of the camera for easy access, which is important when we've got the camera to our eye. Some people have complained about the lack of custom keys on the Alpha 7C, but have missed the fact that you can actually use the movie button as a custom key. So as I pointed out uh, earlier, the, the great thing about the wide focus area on the Sony cameras is it's much wider than wide on an old school DSLR. Wide really was just a broad and central focus area. It wasn't that wide at all. And so this 
does lead many um, DSLR photographers to missing the subject. Your subject ha has to cross one of those focus area points for the camera to work out where to focus and in this instance there's only background appearing in the central area. So when we're tracking a bird with a with wide with a Sony camera it doesn't really matter if the uh, the bird as we're panning uh, moves uncomfortably close to one of the edges of the frame we can crop later remember but the camera is still tracking that right out to the edge of the frame and so that is uh, one of the hero features of the wide focus areas now one of the features for instigating tracking on the Alpha 7C which is a change of behavior the AF on button is not just a way of starting AF it's also now linked to AF on and tracking on so very quickly if we press that even before we're ready to take any shots you'll see the subject that the camera is tracking and for whatever reason if it's not the right subject we can release reacquire or adjust our choice of focus area or touch the screen to prioritize the subject so that's a great new feature and I suspect it will appear on all new Alpha cameras after the Alpha 7C in this instance I want to show you that if uh, I'd acquired the subject straight coming out of the gate uh, at the beginning of the run the um, wide AF would have got that central cowboy on his horse but if I'm acquiring the subject late uh, in the sequence then this horse uh, on the left side of the frame that's getting uncomfortably close to the center of the frame and is closer to the camera the focus is very likely to jump using the algorithms of center and close and miss the cowboy who's doing the decisive moment here so in this instance you again you don't really need to use spot you just need to reduce the size of the focus area and move it to the lower right so that it ignores what is in the center the the algorithms that the camera is now using is what is center and close just in that zone so this is another reliable way of getting the focus point again without having to go to a small flexible spot and um, this is really where tracking sensitivity uh, uh, comes in now as well. Once we have locked on and it's tracking that subject, there are uh, a number of options which tr um, control how sticky uh, the tracking is to that primary target. That primary target might get obscured from view momentarily. Now, if we set that uh, tracking sensitivity to one locked on it is very very sticky and so it will try and stay with the subject for as long as possible until it can't discern any of the original subject at all so to give you an example as that cowboy becomes mostly obscured from the horses dismounted there is just a very small portion of that cowboy left in the frame but it, with that um, uh, sensitivity um, set to one it's staying with that subject as long as possible a lot of photographers move that uh, that tracking sensitivity to responsive uh, which sounds good it sounds like a good word responsive but what happens is with responsive is the camera jumps from the primary target much earlier to acquire a new target it's basically going to give up on your original target not very good for a great sports photographer who's tracking somebody with a ball maybe okay for a wildlife photographer who's tracking a zebra in a herd of zebras and any zebra will do but maybe not for a sports photographer this is uh, one of the reasons I might start reducing the focus here this dog is running through very long grass and because the grass is closer to the um, the camera and getting closer to the center of the frame this is again where I might move to zone I may even move to spot now in this instance I'm showing moving to zone and moving the zone to the top of the frame so it ignores the grass uh, which is close to the camera in the bottom half of the frame and the timing that I choose to acquire the subject is when the dog is at the top of his stride so high above the grass and then as the dog descends into the low um, uh, grass 
uh, during its uh, uh, running is the camera will know that it's not tracking something that's green it's tracking something with hair uh, because texture is one of the new algorithms with AF tracking it will ignore the texture of the grass and track uh, the fur of the dog instead as we start moving the focus area um, it's a good idea to um, think about the color of the focus area and this is something that's appeared on the Alpha 9, Alpha 7 R4, Alpha 7C cameras is we can change the color of the focus point. So what I would do is I would move it from um, the older gray style focus areas which can be very difficult to find it when they get camouflaged in a busy subject and I would choose something like a white, bright white or red instead so we can always work out where the focus point is positioned in the frame very useful if we're about to start moving that focus point um, one of the other things that we can do if we leave the focus area in wide if we need to move out very quickly from wide and we don't want to use the touch operation on the monitor or the finder for touch tracking and if the subject is now stationary one of the overrides for wide and continuous is to simply press focus standard now the multi selector if your camera has one by default is assigned to focus standard on the alpha 7c which doesn't have a multi selector it's the center of that control dial if we just press and hold that button it moves from continuous autofocus into afc so locks onto that subject a static subject and uh, it also focuses what is on the center of the frame so this allows us to focus and recompose if we want an off-center composition and you'll often hear a beep if you have the audio signals of the camera switched on so this is a great way of overriding uh, fast-moving subjects that have momentarily come to a standstill so a uh, focus standard override for cameras with a multi-selector will be that um, a multi-selector. Just go into the custom key menus if the camera isn't doing what I've just explained. You may have overridden the default uh, for that. And it is a useful default for quickly overriding to get um, a center focus point when we need to focus frame color uh, in this instance I'm showcasing the red focus frame color here and this becomes especially useful as we move into the small focus areas such as the flexible spots my favorite um, a flexible spot is the expand flexible spot here so it will use that central spot smaller spot focus area but if it can't find an edge in that small focus area to focus on it will expand out looking for an edge and this is one of the weaknesses of choosing a spot if it, uh, an edge doesn't pass through the very small focus area the camera struggles to find what it's supposed to be focusing on so if you can imagine a small spot being positioned positioned on a white wedding dress and it doesn't have an edge to focus on the camera will start hunting to try and find the subject and you may lose the moment which is why I don't always use spot um, focus points as my default because occasionally you'll find the camera hunting if you can't position the spot focus accurately if I am using a spot and I'm trying to in this instance where I used it for zone earlier if the tall grass is still proving problematic then obviously you're going to move down from zone to spot and try and position the spot on the moving target if you do put it on the nose or front of the dog's face as that dog gets very very close to the camera you might find that the nose is pin sharp and the eyes are not which is why it's also useful having uh, animal IAF as your um, override uh, if uh, and when you need it uh, a small flexible spot also becomes uh, or an expand flexible spot becomes very useful if we have a static subject that we know is about to move now a lot of photographers can't 
predict the um, the decisive moment when a bird will take to the wing so there's always going to be a delayed reaction of a second or so uh, what until we can start panning the camera to start catching up and following the subject so in this instance I will move um, the expand flexible spot to almost not the extreme edge but almost to the edge of the frame there and put that on the bird while it's uh, um, perched and then when it takes to the wing okay the camera will track that across the frame by which time hopefully by the time it's hit the center of the frame I'll have started panning the camera to ensure the, the bird stays in the center of the frame so this is a good instance to start using an expand flexible spot is when we have the time to position that spot because the subject is not yet moving if you intend to target um, uh, a spot on a moving uh, target you, you know you will need some considerable skill okay so for me to put um, uh, a, an expand flexible spot on the bird's head while it's in flight uh, because the shallow depth of field in this 400 mil 2.8 prime is very very narrow does take some skill so uh, wide might pick the leading wing in this instance okay animal IF may help you out it may not um, stopping the aperture down to increase the depth of field may also help in these instances this is another example of an expand flexible spot is I'll start the tracking by moving that expand flexible spot to a small part of this composition especially important when we're using wide aperture lenses close to our subjects um, in this way I can ignore the back of the head and the hand of this um, a war veteran and just move over to the pocket camera which is recording this event with and then if he moves the camera around the camera will track um, that pocket camera um, nice and reliably now if you are changing your focus areas and you realize Sony have got a lot of focus areas and you don't find yourself using half of them uh, you do have the uh, option of going into focus area limit and unchecking some of the boxes that you're not using so if you're only ever using the expand flexible spot you could basically uncheck uh, the other options such as small medium and large you might leave in the very small spot if you're trying to um, focus on a bird in between um, a thicket of branches you might need a very small spot to thread through the foreground detail but for most photographers you could possibly just uncheck all of those alternatives to expand flexible spot so steady shot number six this is the last of the uh, the top six uh, features here now I would put that into your function menu especially if your lenses don't have a steady shot setting because when we're shooting fast action sports and you start moving the camera steady shot is working against you steady shot wants to work when the camera is steady okay or when you're using maybe slower shutter speeds and you're trying not to get camera shake but if you think about panning the camera we're basically moving the camera so steady shot is not really going to help you out here now one of the features of steady shot will help you out and that is if you are panning from left to right or right to left mode 2 on the lens will keep a smooth horizontal pan um, and so this can be helpful if you're doing those slow shutter speed uh, panning movements at maybe 2 50th of a second or slower um, mode 2 is a good mode to use mode 1 is not recommended at all unless the camera is completely static mode 2 is generally the default setting on my white Sony lenses um, if you forget then you're maybe not going to have as many pin sharp panning shots as you'd hope for because you forgot to move it from 1 to 2 and the lens is fighting against you panning the camera on some of the uh, uh, professional 
um, uh, sports lenses such as the 400 and 600 primes and also on the FE200-600 you have a mode 3 and this is where motion might become erratic it's not just left right right left movement in this case the bird is moving vertically up as it's about to land and so uh, in those instances where motion is more likely to be erratic than predictable sports left to right panning you will then switch that mode button to mode 3 if the lens has it. Some steady shot um, um, uh, on lenses only have an on off button and in which case if you're going to start panning the camera just disable that just switch it to the off button and uh, maybe just remember to switch it back on when you put the camera in your bag because of those low light slow shutter speed shots would benefit from having that steady shot on. Um, if the lens doesn't have any steady shot setting and you're going to be panning the camera then you'll use the, um, the menu setting on the function menu steady shot off otherwise again the camera steady shots uh, the um, the, the steady shot sensor will be fighting you from moving the camera to follow your subject. Now, um, steady shot can be very fabulous, especially when your subject is static. For instance, in this particular example, I would have fired off five or six frames because I'm shooting um, uh, with uh, a long 200 600 um, zoom lens. And instead of shooting at one four hundredth uh, of a second to make sure that I don't get camera shake, steady shot um, at one twenty fifth of a second is absolutely essential. And this has allowed me to uh, capture this particular shot at ISO 100. But for sports action settings, steady shot does need some consideration as outlined. And again, as you probably realized, I do have a video tutorial that discusses steady shot in depth and detail. If you're not going to register these camera settings to one of the memories, which is my strong recommendation, you might just want to print out a flash card such as this and just pop it in your um, um, camera bag so that if you're going to a sports meet or whatever, you can quickly grab it out and go through a checklist um, such as a pilot would go through before um, t uh, taxiing the, uh, the airplane to the runway. Just make sure you've got your top six or more settings all in place so that when you start shooting you at least got some chances of getting some really sharp images but as I said my recommendation put it on the memory dial um, because that way you're not likely to miss one of those settings. In the final remaining part of this video tutorial I'm going to start looking at some of the lenses uh, even if you've got all of the camera settings set up, uh, it doesn't guarantee that all of your uh, shots will be pin sharp if you're using an inappropriate lens that is either slow focusing uh, or just not really designed for rapid focusing, maybe such as Sony's macro lens for, uh, for instance, and also adapted um, lenses going through lens adapters, basically non-native E-mount lenses can focus um, a little bit or a lot slower than Sony's native E-mount lenses. First off, cheap and cheerful is their 85mm Prime. Um, it's a great fast focusing lens. It's just a little bit short on distance um, and so your angle of view is a little bit wide uh, and you will probably um, keep fighting to get continually closer to your subject so you can try and fill the frame but if you can get close to your subjects the 85 mil is a fast focusing lens and it's very affordable because it's not a G it's not a G master it's not a Zeiss design lens it's just a very fast focusing prime and so you can focus with it at very wide apertures to get some figure ground separation uh, perhaps one of the, um, when they, I'd have to say it is the fastest focusing prime in Sony's lineup is the 135 G Master. It's got dual linear XD focus motors that we'll see on the professional sports lenses. So um, you can focus really quickly with this. 
Also, uh, the Zeiss 135 2.8 Batis is another fast focusing lens. So I've shot with both of these 135 primes at um, fast action and sports, and they're both reliable fast focusing lenses. So if you are going to shoot with a prime and you need a little bit more reach than an uh, 85, then certainly go for one of these lenses. Now, if you're shooting um, uh, with an Alpha 7R4 or you're shooting even with a 24 megapixel A7C or Alpha 9, um, you may not have quite enough reach um, with maybe a 135 prime, but just remember we can crop to get closer in post. Even with a 24 megapixel camera, we can throw away two thirds of our pixels and still um, export a 4K file that will fa look fabulous on a 60 inch TV or a 32 inch computer monitor. You have all of the pixels you need for a really sharp image on one of those big 4K screens. And this is the 135 G Master, and I typically will um, use this at f1.8 because um, fast moving sports with really shallow depth of field is really incredible. Um, and so I will use this lens when I can get close enough. And in very low ambient light, when focus can struggle a little bit, it doesn't on a 135 1.8 prime because of its such wide aperture. The sensor has a lot more light and so the focusing is going to be ultra reliable. So um, if we need uh, more reach, then we're maybe we're going to start looking at the zoom lenses, such as the 70 to 200. Now the 70 to 200 2.8 is going to keep the ISO low, even when it's not sunny. So uh, that might be important on a camera um, uh, that uh, where you don't want to be using the ISO 6400, etc. But of course, uh, if we need even more reach than the 7200, the 100 G Master, it doesn't have the bright f2.8 aperture, but it has a lot more reach and it's the same physical size as the 70 to 200 G Master. So what you choose is really about um, how much reach you need. Obviously, if we need more reach, we'll go the 100 400 and just put up with slightly higher ISO when we're using very fast shutter speeds. I have to say I'm more than comfortable at shooting at ISO 3200 on an Alpha 9 or Alpha 7C camera. If your budget doesn't extend to either of those two lenses you are going to get a reach from the 70 to 200 which is another fast focusing Sony lens. Its, um, its aperture is only f4 but even having said that it's it's one stop brighter than the uh, 100-400 G Master. So again you can keep the ISO low you just need to get closer to your subjects. Uh, we've got that uh, 200 millimeter reach and it's also very useful uh, for the APS-C shooters such as the Alpha 6400, Alpha 6600 um, because it's got a wider aperture than the native 70 to 350 fast focusing lens which only has a maximum aperture of f6.3 at its longest zoom. So yes we don't have as much reach on the 70 to 200 um, but we do have that f4 aperture. And as you can see from these running dog shots, you can see um, it is going to be able to keep up with your subject matter. Now, one of the great things about maybe a camera such as the Alpha 7 R3 and Alpha 7 R4 is we might not want to carry around the 200 600 big lens. We might just want to crop more aggressively in post production. And certainly, photographers with a 42 or 60 megapixel sensor do have that luxury of cropping much more aggressively and maybe shooting something on a 7200 2.8 instead of a 100 400 or a 200 600 big lens. Okay, and as you can see from this magnification of that crop is we have the pixels that we need for a good quality 4K image. 
So uh, the native uh, long reach fast focusing lens for the APS-C users is the E70-350. to It does have a fast focus motor. The only downside of shooting fast action um, with this lens on a crop sensor is the ISO will be quite high and the high ISO performance of those crop sensor cameras isn't quite as good as the full frame cameras. So um, on uh, lighting conditions which are less than optimal, such as dark grey days, you will find your images are much noisier than they would be if you'd shot um, with a similar f-stop lens on a full frame camera. So yes, I do recommend this um, lens, but uh, you will find that when the level of ambient illumination drops, uh, you will be slightly disappointed with the levels of noise seen in your images. Now I've actually used this um, lens on an Alpha 7R4 camera. It is fast focusing, so we can shoot those birds in flight. The Alpha 7 R4 is not known for its great high ISO performance and if we are shooting in APS-C mode then you'll find that the high ISO noise performance isn't much better than the crop sensor cameras. So again you do have to be a little bit wary. You might think we've got the crop ability and we can shoot in crop mode but as we shoot in crop mode on an Alpha 7 R4 we're also magnifying the size of that noise so there will be a little bit of work required in post-production. Uh, this is shot at higher so on an Alpha 7 R4 so noise is relative you know how much noise you can put up with is relative. Just remember don't always zoom into 1-1 one, one. Um, when you're looking at the noise remember to zoom out just to see how noticeable it is for your viewers don't obsess about pixel peeping on the noise with using uh, our APS-C and the Alpha 7 R4 camera. My personal favorite lens for shooting action wildlife that is, um, is a reasonable size but has reach is the 100-400. Uh, I first started using this with the original release of the Alpha 9 camera and just love the combination. Pin sharp, fast focusing, and uh, and uh, with the uh, cameras such as the Alpha 7 R3 and uh, the Alpha 9, Alpha 7C camera, even at high ISO, I think um, I'm happy to shoot at 3200 or 6400 ISO. If we need even more reach on those, you will um, maybe think about using teleconverters. Just remember the focus speed will start reducing or slowing down as we use teleconverters. So it's not an answer to avoiding that 200-600 if you're needing the reach more often. And you'll actually be using um, a, a less effective wide aperture when we put a, a 1.4 teleconverter on a, on a lens which has a maximum aperture of 5.6 we're now using an effective wide aperture of f8 so that 200 600 will give you increased af performance on an a9 camera uh, it'll give you increased sharpness at 600 mil so if you do need reach and af performance we are going to start looking at the longer focal length lenses if uh, you're trying to keep your iso low uh, in less than optimal lighting conditions and you need reach it is going to be an expensive game because you're going to start looking at the 400 and 600 mil wide aperture fast focusing primes and it is an investment that usually is restricted to cashed up um, photographers or professional photographers um, beautiful lenses to use very large quite heavy you know, a difficult to work with handheld through a long day, but but they do perform really, really well. So most people will gravitate to maybe a more affordable 200-600 and just work with the slightly uh, small f6.3 aperture. You will get the reach fast focusing. I'm not entirely convinced of the performance of this lens on the Alpha 7 R4 but more than happy on the other cameras. So for the Alpha 7 R4 I personally would recommend the 100-400. If you need the reach certainly the 200-600 on the other cameras. If you're looking at budget full frame 
I would go the 7200F4. Um, if you're looking for a budget and low weight and you don't really mind shooting in APS-C mode, then maybe take a look at the APS-C E70-350. You'll be shooting at 10 megapixels on a 24 megapixel camera, so just be wary of that. But it is fast focusing and very, very sharp. And you've got an effective equivalent full frame reach of 525. So you might not need to crop that much, even though you're only shooting with 10 megapixels. If you're looking for um, shallow depth of field, fast focusing, and um, you're looking for that beautiful bokeh, uh, maybe look at that 135. G Master because it is a beautiful beautiful lens okay so that concludes my Sony telephoto lenses and it's also drawing the close to this uh, tutorial just a reminder I do um, uh, and mentor and uh, offer consultancy services for photographers via my patreon site You've got um, a number of tiers to choose from if you're wanting to get in at the bargain basement $5 or, you know, get um, more of my time for that $50 platinum tier there. OK, check out my website, um, uh, markgaylor.com. All of my learning resources on this website are free to download and that includes a, a range of ebooks for camera specific cameras. If you download anything and you find that it was incredibly useful, uh, because I uh, write these, I don't, I don't create these learning resources, uh, I'm not paid to create these resources from Sony, so just uh, support my time by making a small donation, but only if you found them really useful. Okay, I'll catch you online next time. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed or found this video tutorial useful. Subscribe and I'll catch you online next time.